Steve Buck Skinner 54 and as you can see behind me there's my truck and uh, yeah as you know last time I was here I had it serviced and uh, well now some indicator lights came up on it bummer and uh, I get some strange readings and they're not going to get it into the shop until tomorrow hey I just found something that uh, I consider my, one of my YouTube buddies, uh, Brian Manning, was talking about. Something to use for a bobber. Outstanding. Check this out. Right here. Yeah. Not to cut me a few of those. Outstanding. Woo that's, that's pretty cool. Anyway, thanks, Brian. I will uh, definitely be cutting some of those put with my kit I'm gonna get out here further more brush in the other area that I went into over there but I'm gonna keep on going see how far out here I can go I'll let's see way out here a bit some great country out here I don't know if there's a road out beyond all this or what the deal is but kind of cool out here anyway. I just kind of like being out in the woods, being out in the brush like, well, so many of you guys, gals. Kind of neat being out here. Since I got all this time now, and it's only about midday over here right now, I'm gonna break through this stuff and show you where I'm going. Maybe I don't know. It affected me differently the other day, I guess. Now some people walk through here to kind of cut a trail before me. So, oh, it's very wet over here. Very wet. Oh, it's kind of marshy. I don't know if there's water back here. I mean, there's water, but I don't know if there's any. Uh, oh, holy smokes. Right up to my ankle there. Well, we'll go back this way. That's just my wet. Over here, we have rubber, rubber boots on for this. We go to another area. And another spot over here. Oh. Alright. I'm gonna break back to this stuff. Go to another area. I don't know if it'll be here or not. Yeah, outstanding. I've been wanting to come back through here for a, quite a long time now. Really looking forward. You know, my as a truck driver, my time at home is awfully limited. I'm usually out for four to six weeks, and I only get home about every other uh, well I stay home for about usually three or four days and then I'm back out for five or six weeks by choice nobody's making me do that but uh, look what I found well, it's already on the ground I just busted it off I'm gonna hang on to that they're all over the place over here so yeah thanks for that tip Brian so make some bobbers 
Let me show you the view where I'm at right now. Yeah, over there where the other boy, it was really thick with grass. And you couldn't see it, but just below that there was a lot of water. In fact, I even got up to my pants there. This is cool. I like I love areas like this. One time I had a blowout over in West Virginia on the toll road. And uh, well I was when the guy got there to, to uh, change my tire, I took off into a little spot there where there was a creek. And man, I'll tell you, I could have just went and went and went. It was, just, it was beautiful back there. The, the east coast, uh, or not the east coast, but the eastern woodlands are just beautiful. Really nice. There's definitely been a trail cut back here. It was by people, or probably by animals. Boy, it just goes on. Back here. Yeah, you guys ought to, you know, if, if you like history, and, uh, you know, really, to me, I mean, I do the mountain man thing, the, you know, the mountain man fur trade era. But, you know, it, it really kind of started with the Eastern Long Hunters. I mean, essentially, those guys were mountain men. And uh, they went for long periods of time. You know, the uh, mountain men went for season. So they were gone for a, quite a long time in the season there and uh boy i don't know where this is going here but uh quite bushy right here um you know they were gone for a whole season in fact uh years ago i read that um at that time you're looking at around 1820 to 1840s and, and earlier, but right around that time period, uh, blacksmiths and carpenters earned up, earned up around $2 a day. Very good money for back then. Mountain men earned more money in one season than those guys did in a whole year. Problem is, <laughs> uh, they had those kind of situations. If they worked for a company, a lot of their uh, 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 equipment that they used was purchased from the companies that they worked for. Hudson Bay and, and the American uh, Fur Company and all that. And uh, really getting thick over here. There's a spot where something was laying down over here. Uh, so they owed, they wound up owing more money than they, they actually earned. And uh, even free trappers, which those, those guys were, they were hard pressed to even survive, especially if they were completely by themselves. They might have a partner or two. And uh, the free trappers, would go to rendezvous. See, I, I also read that, I'm getting stuff all over my pants here. I also read that uh, uh, the traders really cleaned up. I mean, as far as money goes. They would go and they would take supplies. From what I understand, whiskey, for example, was 10 cents a gallon <laughs> and they would water it down and sell it for two dollars a pint <laughs> do the math i mean they cleaned up really well they would take flour now they didn't cut the flour but they would take flour and put it in smaller sacks and sell it for an absorbent amount of money and uh, of course I'm, i would imagine they did it with lead 
and any other raw materials that they had to get uh, to just go back out in the woods and start all over again. Kind of like a prospector finds a little bit of gold and uh, he goes out and uh, or comes back into town after finding a little bit of gold, boozes it up or something and gets himself a few more few more supplies and uh, uh, goes back out again to try to find some more gold you know it's just uh, it's, a, it's kind of a vicious circle and I, I believe the same thing happened to a lot of the mountain men maybe you know of course after the fur trade uh, in the early 1940s when they came into you know making hats out of silk which was the uh, demise of the fur trade as far as beaver went and uh, some of them, you know, other furs started becoming more popular and some of them still trapped that. A lot of them became scouts for the military. Some of them became ranchers and such. So, uh, you know, they all just kind of went on to do other things. And some of them stayed out in the frontier, out in the wilderness and uh, just kept continuing their lives that way because that's what they were accustomed to. So, quite enough array of characters, French, Scots, uh, Irish, English, and just uh, born and bred Americans, you know, from all different parts of the country, went to the mountains to uh, seek their fortune in fur, but uh, uh, was almost a kind of complete wipeout of the beaver population. So anyway, uh, kind of interesting, you know, to, to find out about the history and and uh, what these guys were up against. I mean, grizzly bears were, were uh, a real danger to them. Uh, they stay along the uh, rivers and streams quite a bit where, you know, there might be a she-bear with a couple of cubs and if you came in between them, you were pretty much doomed. Uh, so, you know, the story about uh, Hugh Glass and uh, so, I'm gonna give you a little, see what we got here, where I'm at right now. I'm in a little bit of a clearing right here. It's, it's really pretty out here. And, uh, yeah, it's a really cool tree right there too. This is tree. So, well, I think I'll get on back. I could keep going out further, but I think I'm just gonna see a lot more of the same. I don't know, I think I'll go a little further. <laughs> Once you start, you hate to stop, I guess. I think it's gonna get real mushy over here again. Yeah, it is. It's sinking like crazy over here. Bunch more wetland here. Well, Maybe another time I'll circle around another way. We'll see. Anyway, hey, thanks for watching, everybody. I think I'm just going to head back. And uh, this is Steve Buckskinner54 with Mountain Man Bushcraft. God bless. We'll see you all next time. Bye.